All right, guys, and we are back again today because we have to talk about a specific recruiting week that is coming up for the University of Oklahoma or Brenton Venables and the staff. It's an extremely important weekend. It's a weekend last year that set the tone for the recruiting class for Oklahoma, and that was Party at the Palace. But it's more than just the Party at the Palace this week because you have Sooners under the stars, and although 2024 is here and Oklahoma's got momentum, Guys, the 2025 class could be special for Oklahoma as well just because of all of the OK preps guys that could potentially be in the class. But also, you guys have wondered about the offensive line for Oklahoma. And the offensive line questions you have might be answered in the 2025 class. But guys, before we dive into it and before we talk about it, go ahead and hit that like and hit the subscribe button. Jump down in the comments below and let me know what y'all's thoughts are. But today, I'm going to be joined by Jay with Unfair Sports to kind of break down the party at the Palace and Sooners Under the Stars. Jay, tell the people where they can find you. Yeah, search for me on YouTube at just search Unfair Sports. PG, thanks again for having me. Uh, join in. Can't wait to talk about uh, some of weekend activities that's coming down. Oh, it's going to be a great one because I think I have to start it off with Sooners Under the Stars. We had Michael. That's the first one, so that makes yeah. sense. We had Michael Fasusi on the podcast, and you guys know I'm pretty high on that one after talking to him and uh, getting a chance to learn a little bit more about his recruitment. But the five star offensive tackle out of Louisville, Texas, will be here at Oklahoma. And if you're Oklahoma and you're a fan, you're excited about this list of visitors. And I'm going to kind of run through it real quick, and then I'm going to hand it off to you and kind of let you give me some thoughts about what you feel like the staff's doing here and uh, you know where you feel like Oklahoma might be at with some of these recruits. But, I mean, like I said, you got Michael Fasusi coming on campus. You've got Jordan Davison, the five-star running back out of modern day, Lincoln Riley's own backyard. We'll see if they can uh, potentially make some ground there because DeMarco Murray is doing something on the recruiting trail that he couldn't do with Lincoln Riley. Uh, you got four-star wide receiver Isaiah Mosey out of Lee Summit North, five, four-star wide receiver Marcus Harris, four-star running back Riley Wormley, four-star quarterback Kevin Sperry, four-star defensive lineman Kamori Moore, four-star defensive lineman Landon Rink, who we put up some notes on the 247 page. Make sure you guys go check that one out. Four-star defensive lineman Xavier Uponu, four-star cornerback Kobe Sellers, four-star linebacker uh, Christian Thatcher, three-star cornerback Zay Gentry, three-star linebacker Abdul Sanders Jr. By the way, another guy right in the backyard of Lincoln Riley at modern day. Uh, defensive lineman Gus Cordavo, uh, edge rusher David Nweboku, uh, who we're going to have on the podcast soon, okay. tight end Chase Lofton, and safety Rohan Kazadi. So, Jay, just at a first glance of some of these 2025 guys, what are your thoughts here, and what do you think Oklahoma can do? I'm going to be honest, man. Kevin Sperry's out there working. Um, I've been hearing really good things about him – from uh, his counterparts at Carl Albert, as well as some recruits. He's recruiting and he's trying to bring in some big names with him. And so um, I'm the, the names, of course, he's all 2025. And so uh, it's funny because the running joke is like 2026 isn't a real year. So as we start to hear about the 26, 26 kids and some of the 2025 guys, everybody's like, that's not real stuff. We don't want to hear it, but I love you, PG, that you're out there, you know, getting this information. But um, I think the biggest thing to look at is like a Michael Fasusi and the offensive line recruiting that's going to be coming down from 2025. It appears that that's going to be one of the more elite offensive line classes. There's a lot of elite talent and highly rated talent because, heck, uh, Fasusi is already a five star and he's one of those players that we are definitely keying in on. So. A lot of people have been giving pushback to the notion about Coach Bill Beatonbow and how he recruits offensive linemen. And I point out to everybody, like, look, he has a type. He has a specific set of players that he wants, and it's usually those that are very versatile that can play at every single position on the line from center all the way out. And you're going to notice that from a lot of his players because then he can move them around, develop them, and then really find what's best for them is the left side or the right side. Um, is he, are he good in the middle, just depending on their talent level? And so – I'm pretty stoked to see how many more offensive linemen we can get in there. Defensive line, I know that we're going to get players. Bates and Chavis has been doing a fantastic job of attracting those 2025 players. We, I want to see where we go offensive line-wise, and having Fasusi come in town is huge, in my opinion, because if we can lock him down and start adding people to that anchor setup, whew, we're going to have a big year going into the SEC. 
Yeah, and actually, somebody that I left off this list is Ty Haywood, uh, a four-star mm-hmm. offensive tackle out of Denton, Texas. Denton Ryan, I, I, I remember he announced the other day that he was going to be on campus for Sooners Under the Stars, and I just forgot to add him to the list. So I'll have to make sure I do that. But you're right. 2025 is the year where Bill Bedenboe and the staff really wanted to make grounds on the offensive line. And that reason being is because not only do you have Michael Fasusi and Ty Haywood in places at Texas that you've recruited pretty well, and Michael Fasusi is also not only being recruited by Kevin Sperry, but Jaden Hardy, who is a 2024 safety commit for Oklahoma. But you've got four guys out of Bishop Gorman in Las Vegas, Nevada, which is, if you're familiar with it, the home of DeMarco Murray and a current offensive lineman at Oklahoma. Um, And I think Oklahoma, realistically, could probably take four top 100 offensive linemen in this class. That's where I think they're sitting right now. You got, just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea, you've got Michael Fasusi, Douglas Utu, who's from Bishop Gorman, um, Ali, and I'm going to, I don't even know how to say his last name. So you guys will have to go look it up on 247, but he's from Bishop Gorman. You have Ty Haywood. Then on the offensive line, you have another guy. I'm just don't know. How, I don't even know how to say his name in general, but again, you can go on 247. You can look him up on the offer list. I think Oklahoma is in really good shape here. I, I know people are freaking out about 2024, but listen, sometimes it just doesn't work out and you got to look at the future. It's hard to sell guys to come sit for two years. You know, these guys, they would probably only have to sit one, maybe two, two years instead of having to wait two to three to play. So uh, I really like where Oklahoma could sit in 2020 on the offensive line. And then really the wide receiver position. I mean, Emmett Jones cleaned up in 24. But 25, he's going to have to pick a litter. The Corey Moore, Andrew Marsh, Jaden Nickens, Elijah Thomas, or Elijah Moore. I, 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 the wide receiver out of Chicota. I don't, I don't have his name right in front of me. But mm. Oklahoma's got Elijah options. Thomas. Yeah, Elijah Thomas too. Yeah, and then you got Isaiah Mosey. They've got options. And I think the question coming out of Sooners under the stars is, how many of these guys can you get locked down? Because yeah. you heard about Gus Cordavo, the defensive lineman. Um, he's I, he's been pretty active out there about it to say this is his dream offer. And, uh, I mean, you would expect if it's a dream offer for him, probably wouldn't expect this to last very long in terms of a recruitment. And, yeah, and I get it. He's not ranked in the composite rankings yet, but I'm sure he will be at some point. But right. Isaiah Mose and Kamori Moore, they've been on campus quite a bit. So Isaiah Mose being a legacy guy, you would imagine Oklahoma is probably the favorite there. And Kamori Moore, listen, if Williams Winery commits, why would Kamori Moore not want to play with his teammate? So I feel like, you know, Oklahoma's got an opportunity to potentially lock down some commitments in this upcoming weekend. Jay, what's your over under on how many o- commitments Oklahoma could walk out with? Oh, man. So we're talking Party of the Palace and Under the Stars? Just Sooners uh, Under the Stars. We're not even talking Sooners, about Party of the Palace yet. So if we go Sooners Under the Stars, I'm going to give Oklahoma – I'll give us two commitments. Two um, commitments. I'll set that as the number. If we go over-under, I'm going to say it's probably going to be – I'll say I'll set the over-under at two and a half, and I'm going to say under. I think we'll get about two commitments. Um, I think that's the safest number to say because it's 2025 still. That's the hard part is – Sometimes getting a kid to lock down for two years. Now, some players have. I mean, we've already got two. We got Kevin Sperry that's already locked down his uh, his his commitment. Um, he's done with it. And so, uh, same thing with Grayson Harris. You know, those two players were like, I don't want to go through the recruiting process anymore. I'm good. Let me focus on school. Graduate. Go to the school. And boom, I'm I know where I'm gonna be. And so. That's kind of the hard part is determining just how interested in going through recruiting some of these players are, um, especially when you get to more of your high profile positions like offensive line and defensive line and quarterback. Luckily, with quarterbacks, since most schools only take one per cycle, occasionally you'll take two to make sure you got depth. I can totally see uh, I, no, Kevin Sperry is out, so we're good to go. The focus is going to be Sperry and, and Grayson, uh, Grayson Harris trying to uh, convince everybody else to join the class. So they'll have a whole year to be able to do that, which will be pretty cool. And so I'm going to say two, just to be safe. Well, and I'll tell you everybody this. There's a couple names you really need to watch out for on this visitor weekend where you could see commitments pop off. Four-star wide receiver Isaiah Mosey. That one, I, I think, feel like at any time could pop off from now until the 2025 signing day. I mean, Isaiah Mosey is a guy that's been to Oklahoma. You feel like Kevin Sperry's probably wanting him to shut it down. 
as quickly as possible, get his spot locked in because of the wide receiver position, I don't feel like uh, they're going to take very many guys. So if you're Isaiah Mosey, you might want to potentially look at locking that down quickly. Additionally, you've got Kamori Moore, right? You know, if Williams when Harry commits, I just feel like you're going to get Kamori Moore. And then also on the defensive line, you've got Xavier Ukponen, uh, a guy that played at Denton Geyer with Jackson Arnold, Peyton Bowen, and a potential OU target, Eli Bowen. So, uh, and then also you got Gus Cordavo, who there's been a lot of smoke there and around that uh, commitment or that recruitment as well. So there's some guys that you want to be paying attention to. And let's just say they only walk out with Kamori Moore and Xavier Uponu. Um, I feel like all the Todd Bates haters got to go away, right? I mean, you would think, but, you know, everybody wants more, 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 and everybody's ever satisfied. And so, but you, I mean, you named off a ridiculous list of athletes that if Bates and Chavis can lock that down, my God, like what more could you ask for? Like that propels you immediately to a top five class and no one's probably going to catch you um, because you still got a whole bunch of other positions that you're going to fill up. When you start filling the offensive line, linebackers, heck, we still kind of need some more people in the secondary and we still haven't really focused on that yet. And the beauty of this year for those that are not initiated is that they can take as many recruits as they want this year, uh, as long as they don't surpass 85 scholarships at the time. And so we may see people end up in the portal because they're going to bring in a lot of younger players just to build up the entire roster in preparation for the next three years in the sec. Like, so a big 24 class honestly is mission critical for Oklahoma. If they want to make sure that they're competing properly when the sec comes down the line. Yeah, and uh, you land Xavier Ukponu, Kamori Moore, and let's say Gus Cordavo in the same weekend. Um, Oklahoma is back on the defensive line and recruiting. I don't care if you don't have David Stone and Williams O'Neary committed in the class. That would be astronomical. That would just be astronomical to have uh, going in the to the party at the palace, which we're going to go ahead and transition into uh, party at the palace. Like I said, it was a big weekend last year in terms of Oklahoma for recruiting. And you've got some names there this year. Uh, I've got right now. I've got on my list, four-star edge, Danny Okoye. Uh, you've got the linebacker, Michael Boganowski, Josh Isosa, Isaiah Autry. Uh, you've got Andy Bass coming on campus and you've got Michael Patterson McDonald. And listen, there's going to be more guys that will be here for this. I mean, mm -hmm. you talk to some of the recruits and you hear from uh, some of the guys that will be on campus. They're expecting a big weekend, right? They're mm -hmm. expecting some elite guys on campus. But, Jay, what are some expectations that you have for Party at the Palace and what expectations do you have for the staff coming out of this weekend? Um, I'm anticipating that we're going to see a lot of relationships basically not cultivated but more so um, – uh, additionally developed in preparation for the, the shutdown for a lot of these players. A lot of the bigger name, especially defensive linemen that I've been reading and seeing floating around and been hearing from people in whispers and stuff is that a lot of them want to get this done by their senior season. So game one of the season, they want to have all of this already locked up and done. And so we've got about a four week spot where you're going to be seeing commitment after commitment after commitment. Williams Ranieri is already set for August 1st. Uh, we're waiting on David Stone to make his decision. We know Nigel Smith is going to be September 8th um, because he wants to do it at the new high school stadium. And so, and he just actually asked somebody to make a commitment video for him. So we're seeing a lot of the bigger name players that we're going after that's planning on locking things down before the season starts. And so this weekend is going to be critical in finalizing, Hey, you come in with us, you'll be part of this class, blah, blah, blah. And just about anybody on defensive line that's good is a take for us. We're not asking any questions. We want them specifically because we want to have one of the best defensive lines ever going into the SEC. If we're able to do that, we position ourselves perfectly to battle with the big dogs of Bama and Georgia um, and LSU who's up and rising in Tennessee, who's starting to actually do really good on the recruiting trail, especially on the defensive side. We're, we're building our team in preparation to battle those big dogs in the SEC and try to take that bad boy over. And if we keep it up, I think we're going to do it. Oh, yeah, Oklahoma can 100% do it. And I think there are a couple targets that everybody's watching for Party at the mm -hmm. Palace. One, Dominic McKinley, because we've already all talked about Williams Winery and David Stowe. We don't need to continue to talk about them. But Dominic McKinley is, I think, 
the big question mark. Because if you get a David Stone and a Williams Winery and you add Dominic McKinnon to that class along with Nigel Smith, I mean, is is this the best defensive line class Oklahoma will have ever landed? Oh, yeah, ever. Yeah. Period. Period. I mean, even with the class with Tommy Harris, we didn't have we didn't have this many at this caliber level that can walk in and probably start anywhere in the country. That's the difference maker there is. We're, our, not only is our defensive line really good that we got in the 23 class, um, just this addition, this 24 class, like I said, I mean, we could see two players, at least two players starting immediately. And if we could pull, and we've talked about this before, and I put out a video in regards to it, if we could snatch the number one player out of Louisiana and pull him from the defensive line there and bring him here, oh my goodness. At that point, I would like everyone to shut up in anything in regards to Ty Bates and never speak his name again. <laughs> well, and here's the deal. Uh, whether you believe this or not, Oklahoma actually leads in that recruitment. Uh, that's not anything that's been hidden. This is something that we've talked about many times. Uh, Dominic McKinley in Oklahoma, there's a very good relationship there. And it mm -hmm. really centers around the sole mission uh, and really just the relationship that his mom thinks Oklahoma could have with just the entire family and the faith-based centering. And I, I think that's really important. And, you're, and you've heard a lot from recruits that we've had on the channel uh, and just you know from other commitment videos you've heard from other places. Sole mission is really a selling factor for a lot of recruits and their families. And it sounds like it will be that for Dominic McKinley. Yep. The question is, can you get Dominic McKinley on campus for party at the palace? And the second part of that question is, can you get him to commit sooner? Because if you have to wait till January, I don't know if you feel too good about that just because it's LSU. I mean, you saw what they did with Harold Perkins in 2022, Jesus. probably landing a guy that probably should have been the number one recruit in that class. I mean, let's just be honest here. He was that good and he showed it off in his true freshman year. Yeah. Yeah. Harold Perkins was, was my top guy and and it's crazy that he wasn't considered that and yeah he went to LSU and just started dominating seven and a half sacks I'm expecting double digits out of him hell if he plays the way that it's anticipated I mean he was like ninth nationally or whatnot if he plays the way it's ex that he could potentially play I mean there's a really good chance that this dude could be in 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 New York with the Heisman Trophy people um, he has that capabilities. And if he goes out there and gets double-digit sacks and pushes towards 20, no hyperbole, man. If he gets closer to 20, man, there's a good chance. And he is that talented. We watched him as a freshman go out there and just be just dumb. He's the guy that everyone – he's already on the all SEC first team as a, as a sophomore now. Like People yeah. recognize, like, oh, yeah, we're not going to be stupid enough to say that he's not. No, he's – He's going to be a number dude. one draft pick if he keeps this up. Yeah, he's that dude. And and LSU has an absurdly good defense Yep. Uh, already. I mean, on the defensive line, they've got him and Mason Smith. That They're, they're, they're going to be something that's just like, yeah, I, I don't want – I don't want to see them. Yeah. Put it like I'm, that. I'm actually scared of what LSU can do because Brian Kelly uh, did a damn good job at Notre Dame. And um, he's going to do just as good of a job at LSU. Mm -hmm. And that shows you because they're in the running for Colin Simmons and Dominic McKinley. So we talk about how good Oklahoma's defensive line class could be. LSU could have a similarly good offensive or, de or defensive line class. But Dominic McKinley's not the only five-star recruit that people are talking about getting on campus for Party at the Palace. Second one's Terry Bussey. I know he's received crystal balls from Steve Wiltfong to A and M, yeah. But this is another recruit where a lot of people believe you get him on campus, you might put yourself in position to land the five star athlete that a lot of people believe will play wide receiver. And I say believe play wide receiver because he's just as good as on defense as he is on the offensive mm -hmm. side of the ball. Um, you get him a Swiss Army knife, you know, on campus, you feel like you're in pretty good position there to potentially land him. So. What do you think about Terry Bussey? I like Bussey. Um, he's coming off an injury, correct? I don't know. If I'm correct, he's coming off of an injury. I'll Google that and make sure that I'm correct. I'm not speaking any craziness. But um, I know that Bussey is one of those players that's just a monster regardless where he's out in the field. He's one of the top players in Texas. He's considered one of the best almost to ever do it. I mean, he's not Kyler Murray, but at the same time, he's – I mean, he, he rushed for – what, 2,400 yards, passed for like three or almost 4,000 yards, had like 70-something touchdowns, that's dumb numbers. Like, dumb, dumb numbers. Like, like, like what, what do you do? How, 
what do you say when you see a player's numbers like that in Texas? That man's a monster. And I am I think that Oklahoma has definitely prioritized him on top of some of the other players they're going after. Because if you can get a Terry Bussey into your class and get yourself some versatility like that, you're going to walk into the SEC. You're going to be walking in with a lot more confidence than you do without him. Yes. And uh, like I said, Terry Bussey's a Swiss Army knife. He can do it all for you. And really outside of that, you know, Oklahoma, whoever else they get for Party in the Palace, it's going to drum up excitement about what OU can do in the 2024 cycle. And again, I've said it this whole time. I think a lot of what you land and what you could potentially get depends on David Stone, right? What if David Stone shows up that weekend and he decides that's the weekend he commits? If he commits at the Party at the Palace, I think that potentially could sell the idea of a Dominic McKinley or a Terry Bussey Mm -hmm. to be a part of Oklahoma's class. So we'll just have to wait and see. But Jay, go ahead and tell the people where they can find you once again. Search me on YouTube, Unfair Sports. Follow your boy Jay. Make sure that you, if you are new to this channel, hit that like button as well as subscribe and uh, join PG on the journey. We're always dropping some fun nuggets and uh, conversation, man. So thanks for having me as usual. Yes, no, I appreciate you coming on. And guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and hit that subscribe button. Jump down in the comments below and let me know what y'all's thoughts are, where y'all think the 2024 class for Oklahoma could ultimately end up landing.